Did you know that God has generals, men and women who believe God and took him at his word? Their lives have been marked by God and they've impacted their culture with truth, miracles, signs, and wonders. Did you know that God is raising up new generals today? Maybe one of those are you. Check it out. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. I want to talk about God's generals. I want to talk about God's generals and that um, it's a book that was written by, well, it's titled, there's a lot of God's generals, but God's generals was written by Robert Learden. The subtitle of it is, you know, why they succeeded and why uh, some failed. Mm. And we can learn, you know, from those that have gone before us. But he talks about, there's um, 12 of them. He talks about John Alexander Dowie, uh, Mariah, uh, Mar Maria, Mariah Woodward, Woodward Edder, Edder uh, Evan Roberts. Um, I would have called him Robert Evans. I don't know why I would have called him Robert Evans. Right. Anyway, so Evan Roberts, Charles Parnham, William Seymour, John G. Lake, Smith Wigglesworth, Amy Silver McPherson, Catherine Kuhlman, William Brannon, Jack Coe, and A.A. A. Allen. You don't have any problem. All you need is faith, faith in God. God. <laughs> and uh, these are just people that their stories are so interesting because, you know, so many, the, the, the enemy just lies to so many of us, causing us to believe that there's something that we need to do or get or become before we follow God in the intensity of those who follow God in a way that impacted their culture or society mm -hmm. in the past. And the truth is, you know, it's just saying yes to God. And when you, you see these, most of these people, these generals, they, they call them, that they were just people just like you and me. I mean, even when James writes about, you know, uh, about Elijah, he said he was a man like you're a man. But yet he prayed and God stopped the rain. Mm. You know, it's about us just believing God. I think about, you know, Smith Wigglesworth. And Smith Wigglesworth was a plumber and he stuttered. Yes. He stuttered and his wife uh, was ministering. He had no problem helping his wife out. And he would actually work the altars and stuff while his wife was ministering because he just felt like he couldn't speak because he mm -hmm. stuttered. And um, all of a sudden, he just got confidence, you know, that uh, that God could use him. He began to move out, and he said, well, Lord, as long as I don't, my knees don't wear out on my pants or my shoes or something like that, I'm yours. And But he was known as a man of faith. You know, whatever God said, that's how it was. And he had a, he had. You know, the reports are he did not want any outside influence. He didn't want to hear about the media. He didn't want to hear about the news. All he wanted to know was about the Word of God. And uh, and I think about Summerall, Lester Summerall, when he was going over to visit, you know, Smith Wigglesworth, and he was coming there to his house with a newspaper under his arm. And uh, when he's knocking on the door, Smith Wigglesworth answered the door, and he said, what's that? And he was talking about the newspaper right there. <laughs> And, of course, he took it out and threw it over in the bushes, and he went into the house, and they went and ate together, and they pulled the Bible out and began to read together. And it's so interesting because mm -hmm. people think, there's what's the, what's the secret? It's the same secret. <laughs> it's Jesus, the Word Jesus. of God, man. Go after God. He loves you. He's got a plan for your life. And this radical miracles, you know, God just really worked through some of Willsworth in a powerful way, a plumber that just said yes to God. Mm -hmm. And when he found out there was more that he didn't know about, he was very, he didn't care. He just went after it. Mm -hmm. uh, he was at one particular meeting that, you know, he heard about the power of God and the spirit of God. And somebody was there in this meeting talking about it. He just stood up in the middle of the whole crowd and said, I want it. Mm. And he and I was like, oh, oh, we just talked about it. We don't yeah. do that here. <laughs> but also I think about, you know, uh, Mariah, Mariah Wood Woodward Eddard. Well, I'll tell you something. When you, mm -hmm. if we go Mariah Woodward Eddard, there's an interesting story about uh, Smith Wigglesworth that um, about his prayer life, he was so mm -hmm. intimate with God and, and spent so much time in prayer that um, there were some ministers that wanted to come and, and pray with him, and they had heard the stories of, of his prayer life, mm -hmm. and um, as reports go, that they were in this room praying, mm -hmm. and one by one, the, the, the intensity, the glory of God, the presence of God so filled that room, but one mm -hmm. by one, they couldn't contain it, and they had to exit this room that they were praying Finally, this one minister staying there with with um, with um, Smith, Smith Wigglesworth, and and the presence of God is so just dynamic, and and the glory is just so powerful. He's literally crawling out on his belly because he thought he was about to die in there. He right. just couldn't withstand what God was doing during that time. Yeah, God's presence was, you know, so God was so with him. The Spirit of God mm. was so with him, and so and that's something a plumber just said, oh, "Yes to God." 
You just said yes to God. And the world was changed. And it was, I thought it was pretty interesting just staying with Smith Bigglesworth for, I guess, the rest of the program here since not much left is that, you know, he had his whole ministry and he went and ministered and God moved and he, everything God says he can do, he did. And uh, just like the book of Acts. And, uh, and, but he had it when he came to the, we felt like the end of his ministry, he went to his house and he was getting the mail out of his mailbox. And he realized every letter in that mailbox was asking for him to come and not asking for the Lord. He realized in his own words is that, you know, paraphrasing that I taught them how to come to me, but not how to come to the Lord. Mm. And whatever, how I presented the gospel, they're asking for me, Jesus. They're not asking for you. If you'll give me seven more years, I'll change this mm. seven more years. And so God gave him seven more years, Wow, seven more years. And he ministered to help people understand that we're called to lead people to Jesus, not to your organization, not to you. This is a, this is a, this is a good evidence of a true prophet or a false prophet. A true prophet leads people to God and a false prophet leads people to themselves. Mm. I mean, you gotta, I gotta go back and get the other word. I gotta go to the person again. It's like, why didn't you, aren't you more in love with God after hearing I have that? to pray for you. I yeah, have to pray yeah right, for right, right. And he realized that he, he wanted to lead people to Christ. He wanted them to know God. And he says, my sheep, you know, the word of God says, Jesus says, my sheep know my voice and they follow me. Mm. And, um, and so he was, uh, he took seven years to begin to change that. I mean, think about that even today. If we begin to get that same mindset and say, you know, instead of trying to bring people to our building, organization, wow. our denomination, our this, just bring them to Jesus. Jesus. I mean, think about that. Yeah, it's powerful. I mean, that that is what we're called to do, right? Mm. Yeah. I, you know, he 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 is the head. You know, he's the firstborn from amongst us. We you know we're heirs of, of with God, heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. He's leading us. He's our mm. shepherd. Um, it's him, him that actually died for man's sin, and we're supposed to introduce people to. It's like almost like we're ambassadors. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Sent here to be able to represent the kingdom of God and the, and our King. And so Smith Wigglesworth was a very interesting man. He uh, believed everything that God said. He moved in it, and God backed up what he did. Yes, he did in a powerful way. I mean, yeah. some of the stories that happened at some of those meetings. I mean, getting out of your box, your mindset, putting God in a box, how you think about what he can do. If you just said, God, do whatever you want to do. Do whatever you want to do. And it's so important because I think about quite often is people try to imitate somebody who has in the past, you know, been used by God or somebody that they know that this is the way he talks. This is how I have to talk. If this hmm. is what he, what he reads, this is what I got to read. And then you start take, trying to take on their personality and all you can be is you. Mm -hmm. And God loves you uniquely as you are. And he's not calling you to be somebody else you're not. And yes, you know, how you express your love for God and how you minister would be, could be totally different than everybody else in the face of the earth. But God called you and you can do you. I mean, you can do you. It's pretty, it's, it's not hard to do you. And uh, um, you may have to apologize a lot for doing that's you. Right, that's right. That's yeah. right. That keeps us humble. Yeah. And and imagine that if, if, if all the plumbers begin to say, you know, I'm going to do this thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many plumbers do you see today that are saying, I'm going to follow God? Yeah. You know, versus a lot of the skilled labor like that is sitting in the pews, talking to, listening to someone that has to call them to come fix their plumbing because they don't know how to fix plumbing. Exactly. Right? <laughs> and it's like, you can be used by God. I mean, think about that. I mean, there's so many generals talked about here. I think about, you know, Amy Simple McPherson, you know, the the founder of the Four Square Church. She had only, she was the first uh, owner of a Christian radio station in America was Amy Simple McPherson, wow. which is Angeles Theater, which is where the Dream Center is today for um, Tommy Barnett. Tommy Barnett's son, Matthew. Matthew Barnett. He's in the uh, building that was built for uh, Amy Selwood McPherson, wow. and she didn't she didn't want to start a, a denomination, but they wouldn't but she's, they wouldn't accept her ministry because she was a woman, and people were getting saved, and so they had to do something. So they started the Four Square Church. That it's started. like early nineteen hundreds. Yes, and, wow. and it's Angeles Theater, and uh, and we're benefiting off of her ministry today. So many people have mm. been touched powerfully by, uh, you know, what she just went after God. And uh, and sometimes it's important that the old move reject the new move because if not, you'll try to blend in what God did with what God is doing and you want, both of them will be destroyed. Yeah, It's a way, this is a good way to think about it. Honor what God has done, understanding that it is him, 
Why diving in and going fully after what he's doing? Because That's the good. Lord is doing a new thing. Remember, it's both the, what they have in common is they're both God. Both God. Both God's moves, so you don't touch that. And But you honor it while you just dive in after what God is saying. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you've joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfntv.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless. Thank you.